There's a bill, there's an actual bill that would protect murderers for lynching black people. The Missouri bill is triple six. That's the number of the bill, I kid you not. A bill centered on what they call self defense is making its way through the Missouri state legislature has sparked significant outrage for its consequences, which critics say would allow for the murder of black people, it would allow it to be legal. Let's put up a picture of the lawmaker behind this. Let's put his picture up. His name is Eric Burleson. He sponsored the bill, it's a Senate bill. Missouri Senate Bill 666. Yes, really. Is being described by its Republican sponsor as an effort to loosen gun laws in the state. Because obviously Missouri needs looser gun laws. But a top prosecutor in Missouri has said the bill, if it is enacted, would shield killers from prosecution if they simply claim self defense, giving the state its own unique spin on the controversial stand your ground laws sprinkled around the country. A former congressional candidate took it a step further and suggested the legal lynching of black men would ensure if Missouri General Assembly advances the bill, okay? The bill literally according to the sponsor, it just stops overzealous prosecutors when somebody is accused of murder. Lindsey Simmons, who was a candidate in the 2020 elections for Missouri Congress, called out the bill for what it is. He said, and I quote, Senate Bill 666 makes Missouri a safe haven for the lynching of black men. Simmons wrote Tuesday in a Twitter thread before adding later, this bill is in direct response to the murder of Ahmaud Arbery, the reckless actions of the McCloskeys, and we're gonna get to that, plus the sham that was the Rittenhouse trial, there is no doubt. Stuttgart County prosecuting attorney Russ Oliver also blasted Senate Bill 666 as effectively being the, and I quote, make murder legal act. Oliver said, making the bill a law would absolutely create chaos in the state of Missouri and automatically have the presumption of self defense in every single assault and every single murder in the entire state. Now remember the McCloskeys, let's put their pictures up. Will did an automatic rifle during a BLM protest. They were just walking past his home, they weren't bothering him. He just came outside with a gun. Well, mm -hmm. he was charged with a crime, it was a slap on the wrist. Uh, the bill before the Senate now turns the council doctrine into a bar to prosecution. McCloskey, a current candidate for US Senate said, we were shocked to find out when we were charged that the council doctrine can only be raised as an affirmative defense, he added. You have to have the jury decide the issue of whether or not you committed a crime. Yeah, that's how it's supposed to go. <laughs> and then whether or not the castle doctor provides you with the defense, that's backwards. Now remember, these are lawyers, okay? He's an attorney. Now some of you may say, well doc, I get it, it's a bad bill, how is it racist? Let me show you the racist impl implication of the bill. The stand your ground laws, those are racist too. You know why? Because over 90% of the successful use of stand your ground laws have all benefited white males or white females. When black people implement the stand your ground protocol, the law in their state, they are prosecuted at a level of 92%. When whites, it works the other way around. Mm. That's your racial component. Remember, prosecutorial discretion still matters. Now in this case, what this bill would do, it would literally presume that you are acting in self defense even if you have murdered somebody. Wow, thoughts. Yeah. 
No, and it's incredibly racialized. And we know, you know, one of the first murders that sparked the BLM movement was the murder of Trayvon Martin in Florida by George Zimmerman, who, yeah, got off um, on the stand your ground law. Um, but, you know, there was a scuffle in that case. But in this case, you could imagine in places like Georgia, Ahmad Arbery's killers would not have gotten off. I mean, would have gotten off, excuse me. They would have not have been convicted. The last thing I'll say on this is lynching. There's not enough anti lynching laws in. In this country. In fact, the first anti lynching law was just passed last year, 2020, yep. which basically says, yeah, it's illegal to do mob justice on on people you think committed a crime or you're afraid of, and nine times out of 10, black Americans. Yep. So it's just. It's just to think that, like, oh, we're over that period. That would never happen again. Look at the cases that are before us and we've named them on how this kind of vigilantism is creeping back into becoming normalized. And unless we do something about it beyond just this one anti lynching law, I mean, we're done for. I mean, we're yeah. it's scary, I'm just scared. <laughs> yeah, and that's why it's important to pay attention to policy because what they're allowing here is their culture of corruption, racial bigotry, systemic oppression to be codified in the new legislation they are trying to get passed. We know it historically existed. We know that it has been part of the DNA of our country. And we thought we were working ourselves out of it, away from it, opposite of it. But now you see this, um, you see this surge of bills being presented that are obviously racist at its core.